Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this very exciting Golden Visa program. Uh, Jason Swan and Shane Peacock here are here from Holborn Assets. So good evening, gentlemen. Uh, things have changed a little bit since we last spoke. Let's go to you first, shall we, Jason? How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. I'm very good. It's, fun. it's, fun. it's been a very busy week. I but, imagine uh, it has. I imagine reason. it has. Yes. Uh, last time we spoke, um, there was uh, you know, people have been saying for a long time, golden visa, uh, no worries. Um, that, uh, that'll run and run. The, the government talked from time to time about it uh, finishing, but that's never going to happen. And this week, it looks like it might. Uh, so it's a very important webinar tonight. I've got Shane here as well from Holborn. How are you, Shane? Good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been a while. Good to see you. Good to see you. So a busy week for both of you then, by the sound of it. <laughs> Yeah, my, my, my hours is extended. So my hours are now 10 till 10 as opposed to the normal 9 till 5. <laughs> right. OK, uh, we will get into the background as to why this has been a very exciting week here in Portugal, especially with regard to the golden visa. Uh, Jason has a presentation for us and there will be lots of time to answer questions. And we have a list of questions that have been <laughs> sent in. So we'll make sure we get to all of those. So over to you, Jason, and please keep those questions coming in as Jason's speaking. And we'll make sure we get them all to the team before the end of the webinar. Jason, over to you. Yep, super. Yeah, well, we'll get stuck in. Uh, there's quite a lot to cover. Obviously, a lot going on um, as of last week. So the aim, uh, what I'd like to try and do for everyone this afternoon or this evening is to obviously clarify exactly what's happening with the withdrawal of the Golden Visa. Uh, and yeah, there'll be a live Q&A at the end. Of course, as you mentioned, Carl, there's a Q&A box at the bottom. So please do pop in your questions as we're going through. Uh, we'll aim to kind of keep them towards the end. Naturally, I think I will be able to answer most of the uh, popular questions as we go through. But uh, yeah, please do uh, fire away. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have a look at some of the top properties currently qualifying for the Golden Visa. I hope we give a good understanding of the process. Anyone that's joining for the first time or at the beginning of their Golden Visa journey, I'll, I'll recap on what the, what the program is and who it may be for uh, so that you can work out if it is something to explore and uh, yeah we'll, we'll be as helpful as we can between myself and Shane and uh, we'll get started so I'm just going to share my screen and uh, I'll run through the basics so uh, if you haven't uh, logged in for one of our webinars before I've come across myself or Shane in, in the past just to briefly introduce myself I'm a, a senior partner for a company called Holborn Assets uh, we are a wealth management practice in Europe where we're not a golden visa company particularly uh, we actually manage over three billion dollars between our 20 offices uh, worldwide uh, but tonight we're going to be focusing on our service designed around achieving residency and citizenship uh, and in particular in portugal and the portuguese golden visa and um, so let's jump in so what is the visa first of all so um, back in 2012 portugal launched the golden visa program and it is one of the most successful uh, citizenship programs into europe uh, Portugal is very much seen as the kind of gateway into Europe, generally down to the very low entry requirements and the very low minimum stay requirement of just two weeks every two years to maintain your visa. So with the visa itself, you get it booked if you get the, a two-year visa. Uh, you can keep renewing that visa for unlimited rights to live and work and enjoy Portugal uh, as much as you like. Uh, and once you have held the visa for five years, uh, you can apply or your citizenship and get a Portuguese passport, uh, which grants you effectively 27 different passports all at the same time, as you can then live in any of the countries. Uh, there are many uh, kind of many ways to Europe, European citizenship, but Portugal is pretty much the last one on the list that still guarantees a passport after a period of time. Uh, it is tried and tested uh, for many years. There's been over 11,000 successful uh, applications now to citizenship uh, and yeah we have we've actually submitted over 10 percent of the world's applications since 2012 so we're very experienced uh, in what we do uh, we have a 100 percent success rate of our applications as well which we intend to maintain uh, but of course we need to be mindful of what is going on uh, as far as the withdrawal uh, which we shall come on to in a second so as a quick recap on on what you get with the visa okay so you know about the uh, allowance to stay in Portugal and the passport after five years. But that will also grant you access to one of the most uh, world-renowned uh, education and healthcare systems by being a resident 
Portugal as well, both for yourself and uh, all of your family. Uh, there is a particularly favourable tax treatment uh, that you can apply for when you physically move to Portugal as well, which will welcome you with 10 years of a very low rate of tax on certain overseas income. Uh, there are some caveats, of course, to that, but it can give you that bit of extra income boost as far as pension income, dividend income, and rental income as well. Uh, I'm not going to touch on that in too much detail tonight, but of course, any questions around the Portuguese tax system, please do send us an email and uh, we should cover that on a one to one basis. Uh, I live down in the Algarve. Uh, I've been in Portugal myself for two years now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I've not picked up too much Portuguese just yet. I'm very good with numbers, not too good with languages, unfortunately, but uh, all in good time. Uh, previous to Portugal, I lived in Malaga, over in Spain for five years. And previous to that, in a very cool and rainy Manchester back in the UK. So you've generally got three main cities in Portugal. You have the Algarve down in the south, where it's a little bit more of a relaxed kind of uh, standard of living, a little warmer, nice beaches. You have Lisbon, which is the main city centre. And up north, Porto is, uh, is one of the big three as well. OK, right, let's get stuck in. So... <clears throat> I've, read, uh, I've been inundated with questions and panic this week about the withdrawal of the visa. There are so many headlines about Portugal has finished the golden visa. The golden visa is no more. It is all over. Okay, and just to clarify, first of all, uh, the golden visa is still in process. Okay, Nothing has changed at this moment in time. No laws have been changed. There has not even been any dates discussed as to when the visa program may finish. However, as of Thursday last week, following on from an announcement back in November, and it's now very clear that the program is going to be withdrawn. Uh, the only question is uh, when it's going to be withdrawn. So, yeah, you don't have to go too far to, to find you know, very dramatized headlines that it has finished. Uh, but just to reassure you that they are still accepting new applications and there is still a window of opportunity to apply for the visa. Um, so on that note, I'm actually going to bring Shade in on this, but if you can just kind of give us a bit of an overview of kind of where we stand at the moment uh, and what you know what's going to happen over the next 60 days. Thanks, Jess. Um, so to, to sort of follow on what Jess has just said um, and reiterate, nothing's actually changed. Um, there's been a lot of pressure from the EU and the EU have kind of brought this in. And I think the government is trying to mix it in with the housing problem. So the housing problem is basically stating they need more homes or affordable homes. And because of that, they feel the golden visa is now uh, increasing pricing. However, obviously, we know on the ground that this is not the case. Primarily, the property that has been sold within the golden visa is commercial property. So not really affecting your residential pricing. However, it has been announced. And what the expectation is, is going forward, um, they have to do 30 days of public uh, interaction. So your main uh, players in the market, your developers, your lawyers, those type of things, there's an interaction with those guys at the moment. After the 30 days of March the 16th, that's the date we're all waiting for, a plan will be devised. The, or the, the group would have met by then. They would have put together a plan. And that's what we're waiting to hear. From past experience, we've been through this before, especially with Portugal. Portugal's gone through two changes in the past. The last one being 2021. 2021 February, uh, they actually announced the change that they were going to be changing where you could buy and and for, for what sort of pricing and, and, and that type of thing. So they announced it in 2021 happens to be similar to what we have now announcing in February. But what the outcome was there is there was a transitional period. They put in a transitional period up until the 31st of December, which is what a lot of the market are expecting now. We're expecting 31st of December to be the transitional period. However, this is government. Anything can happen. So expectation versus reality. We'll have to see what's going on. What we do know is 30 days um, interaction, then what they have to do is they have to write a new bill, present it to Parliament. Now, yes, they have majority in, in Parliament. So if they want to pass the bill, it will pass. But from there, we're now finding that it will need to go to the President. 
Now, the president, in theory, could just sign it off. But then Bill is associated with a number of different policies that they want changing. So not necessarily just the Golden Visa. The intricacies of those other policies will play an effect or will play a role. And we're expecting that then to go on to the constitutional court just to make sure that it all is well and then come back to be signed. So even if you had to take out a transitional period, we've still got a few months left before this actually comes into play. So worst case scenario, we're probably looking at about three months. What the expectation is, however, you're looking at probably the 31st of December. So as with many of our clients, we've seen it already. Uh, the last three or four days has probably been the busiest days of my life. Um, every client that is, has the opportunity to be able to do it is doing it. Us as a business, obviously, we've taken this into account. We do have a refund policy in place to obviously secure everyone's investment. So if you want to look at that a little bit more, please, you know, we want to take out the uncertainty of this. Um, Jason and I have all the agreements that we've drafted all uh, for our clients. So any of that uncertainty, we'll take it out. But I would advise clients to rather take the opportunity in front of them. If it doesn't work out, there's no risk. If it does work out, they've taken an opportunity that which will never be here anymore. So yeah, that, that's kind of where I see things going and, and, and sort of the path forward. Uh, Jason, back to you on the, on the good news. Yep, yep, perfect. So yeah, I mean, the good news is we still have a window of opportunity. The visa is not canceled. Um, so the goal, I mean, our team has, has just doubled in the past week to help process the our existing clients through before the earliest potential withdrawal date uh, and also maximize the window that we have for new applications. But in an ideal situation, you want to be at the point where you have set up your bank account, you have your Portuguese tax number, the legal work is completed and your submission of your application is done before that withdrawal date. If you can beat the withdrawal date, then any future changes in law or the withdrawal will not impact your golden visa application. If we're not able to, to hit that date, then we're in an area of uncertainty. Uh, hopefully, in a worst case scenario, you will be 90% of the way there. So if there is a transition period, and it's a very short one, then at least we can be confident that you will get the application done before the actual withdrawal. So yeah, the clock is ticking somewhat. Uh, obviously, do not uh, panic, don't rush into making any, any unnecessary decisions, but do take the time to work out if it is something that you want to go forward with as now is the time to take advantage of it. So that's where it stands at the moment. Um, so again, any questions on that, please do drop a message in the Q&A at the bottom and we'll come back to those shortly. Okay, so come back to the basics and so who qualifies for the Gungan visa? Now, the idea behind it is that if you do not have a European passport already, you can apply for the government visa. Um, and that person can also include members of their family uh, as, as their dependents to also be included on the same application. So uh, the main applicant can include their spouse, whether unmarried or married is fine. They can include their children up to the age of 18 or older if they're still in education. Uh, or parents, maybe dependent parents or those above the age of 65. Unfortunately, brothers and sisters and work colleagues do not uh, are not able to go on the same application. They would need to do a separate one, but immediate family uh, can all go all together. The idea being you can take up to three generations uh, along with you. Okay, property that qualifies. Um, let's just make this crystal clear what you can and cannot invest into to meet the criteria as it stands right now. As of the beginning of last year, there was a substantial change from the government and they announced that you can no longer purchase residential property in any of the main cities. So in other words, you cannot buy a property for you to live in, in Lisbon, Porto, or any of the coast, basically anywhere with tourism. Instead, if you wish to buy in those main areas, you must now purchase a commercial property, uh, in other words, uh, a completely hands-off investment, which you can maybe use for your holidays, but you're not going to be living there. So that is the that, that was the main change last year. And um, the you can still buy, sorry, inland. So if you do want to buy a property to live in yourself, you can do that and you can qualify for the visa. 
as long as it is outside of those main areas inland Portugal. So the property investment must be at least 500,000. That is the magic number for your standard golden visa. However, if you buy a property in a low density area, you get a 20% discount, bringing that minimum down to 400,000. There is a way to reduce that further. Um, and the way to do so is to invest in a commercial property, which is going through a renovation where the building is over 30 years old. In that case, the minimum comes down to 350,000. But if you're able to do that in a low density area, you can bring it right down to a minimum of 250,000. Other than that, it's not the only route. I think about 90% of applications this year have been linked with a real estate investment. So it is by far the most popular way to go. However, if you have an interest in going through the investment fund, fund route, you can do that from 500,000 euros. Unfortunately, it has to be a hugely Portuguese bias investment fund. At least 60% of what you're investing into must be into Portuguese assets to meet the criteria. Uh, but there's some choices to review there. You can also do a venture capital fund. There are some wild and wacky projects you can get involved with in Portugal uh, and, uh, of course, have their own risk ratings and uh, interest thereon. You can invest into Portugal's scientific research from 500,000. You can set up a Portuguese registered business or you can purchase a Portuguese business from 500,000 and employ a number of staff. Or you can transfer one and a half million euros into a Portuguese bank account for five years. I've not seen anyone do that just yet, Shane. I don't know about you, but generally giving one and a half million euros in a Portuguese bank account with no interest doesn't seem to be that popular. Yeah, not so, the best investment idea. Not the best, but an option to get the passport, should you wish. But those are the routes to the uh, routes to the qualifying investments as it stands right now. Like they, these are subject to change or withdrawal in due course, but right now that's what we're looking at. So Holborn, what we have done is we have put together a portfolio of developments available in Portugal that we can recommend that meet these criteria at each of those price points, all of which have different incentives and different criteria. As a general rule of thumb, uh, the closer that you invest to 500,000, the more profitable you will find the investment is as a standalone investment. The closer you invest to 280, you'll find it's less profitable and there's less incentives. Of course, the big benefit of that is that it simply requires less capital to achieve the passport. But it's just really a case of finding a nice balance between the two. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that's nice and clear. But any questions on that, again, please do drop a message in the box and we'll come back to that shortly. Okay, a um, bit of a busy slide, um, but it's, I suppose, it's a bit of a busy process, but this is kind of uh, the process from A to Z, from where you are now until actually getting the visa in your hand. So step number one is you need to find an investment that ticks all the boxes for the visa, and of course, meets your budget and your requirements as well. Once we have done that, the first thing we must do is attain your Portuguese tax numbers for everyone involved in the visa, and we also need to establish a Portuguese bank account there as well. Once we have those, um, you'll meet with the lawyer, okay, as part of our team. There are many different moving parts, one of which, of course, is the legal counsel. Uh, they'll be going through the purchase documents and ultimately be requesting you to transfer the capital for the property into your new shiny Portuguese bank account uh, when the legal work is complete. As soon as that's done, we will complete the purchase, okay? You will complete the deed as referred to in Portugal. And the day of which you purchase the property is the day we can submit your application to CEF. CEF is the Immigration Office of Portugal. And it is on that day, it is the date of the submission of your application when you can sleep easy again at night because if it is submitted prior to the withdrawal date, those current laws will be honored. And we can kind of uh, relax a little bit at that point and we can take as long as needed to actually get the visa. It is just the submission of the application that we must try to do before any withdrawal date. Um, but from that point, there's not much you need to do there. So within, within our team again, you'll have somebody uh, doing the applications, the translation of any documents. I uh, will keep you up to date with the progress of the application. And in due course, you will have a meeting with Seth and you'll need to fly to Portugal and accompany the lawyer uh, to do your biometrics, to include your fingerprints and your photo. Shortly thereafter, to receive your visa card. 
which will look a little bit like that one there just down at the bottom. Piece of cake, that's it. That's all we need to do. So there's, um, like I said, not too much time pressing on the majority of that. It's just the submission part. The, in an ideal world, we want to do that before the end of March. In my humble opinion, I think it's very unlikely that it could happen before the end of March, but it could happen at the end of March, which gives us kind of five, six weeks in the worst case scenario if it was withdrawn immediately. On average, it's been taken, I don't know if you agree, Shane, but I'd say maybe four to 12 weeks previously to get to that point of having the bank account and the legal work done. And we've got about six weeks in the worst case scenario at the moment. So yeah, yeah take- I think I think the the main thing that we've got to do is we've got to we've got to focus on our expertise. We've been doing this for a while. There are problem points within any kind of process, and I think <coughs> problem points that we've kind of seen in the past would be banks. So we, we we've obviously altered our approach with how we do banks uh, to make sure that we can try and speed up that process. Um, but all in all, we've we've now got it done. The reason why Jason says it's so easy peasy and 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 uh, simple is because myself, my team, Jason, we work alongside you the entire time. Most of it is us uh, assisting you most of the time. You're not going to have to leave the chair you're sitting in. So yeah, that that's that's primarily the focus that we try and do. Okay, so yeah, oh, that's nice and clear. Any questions? Drop them in the Q and A box. Um, so that is the visa in hand. Okay. Uh, following that, you will have a two-year permission slip for Portugal. Okay, it's a two-year visa. Um, at the end of those two years, you must renew again for another two years. And you can renew that visa for two year, every two years for the rest of your life, should you wish. However, after you've held it for five years, on the basis that you've managed to grasp, grasp some basic understanding of Portuguese. Uh, we can apply for your permanent residency uh, and your passport and the citizenship. At that point, well, it is a permanent residency. No, no need to renew any longer. And that is the point at which you have then access to all of the EU to live and access visa-free to over 180 countries worldwide. And just to reiterate myself and Shona with you throughout the process, right, and helping you to find credible investment up until receiving a passport in five to six years time. Okay, so as a quick recap, step one, find an investment. Okay, and it's going to take the it's going to take six to twelve weeks um, to get to the point where we have everything in place to submit the application for your visa. Uh, at the moment, from start to finish, from the submission of the visa to receiving that in hand, it's about twelve months. Um, we expect that will probably get a little bit longer. Uh, last time the rules changed, there was uh, quite a big delay with CEF. So it might take a little longer than 12 months. But again, there's no uh, time restraints on that part. So there's no panic. It does take a little bit longer than 12 months. But once the visa is granted, uh, we will then renew after year two. We'll renew again after year four. And then after the fifth year, we can apply for your passport. Okay, right. That's the process. That's what we do. Um, we, as I mentioned before, we, we've built a, uh, a portfolio of, of different investment options at different price points. Unfortunately, due to, so we can get through everyone's questions this evening, we've not got the time to go through each and every investment that we're recommending at the moment. But I'm going to give you an example of the best options at the minimum price point and the best option at the 500,000 price point. Uh, for any particular questions or for course, details on all of the portfolio, you can just drop us an email, which you'll have at the end of that webinar, and we can go into more detail. At that point. Okay, so classic example of 280. Okay, to buy a commercial property, you need to buy a property that is going through a full renovation. The building is over 30 years old, and it's in a low density area. So there is a Holiday Inn. I'm sure everyone has heard of Holiday Inn Hotel Group. There's a new hotel uh, being created, formally renovated um, inland in Beja, in between Lisbon and the Algarve. And the developer offers to let you buy a share in this hotel. You can buy a share for 280,000 euros, and you will be a co-owner of the Holiday Inn. Uh, Your name is on the deeds with 59 other investors, and it's with Portugal's biggest property developer. They've been around for over 30 years. They have a very 
Hanson portfolio of different Hilton, Marriott, and Sheraton hotels in Portugal. And their incentives that they offer, first of all, um, for those that are familiar with buying property in Portugal, there is a pretty significant tax that you pay um, at the time of purchase, generally around somewhere between 5 to 10 percent, depending on the property price. The developer, however, offers to pay that initial tax as an incentive. They also will do a buyback, a mandatory buyback. So once you have received your passports, um, you can trigger that buyback and they will buy the share back from you for the same price. Okay. There's no interest, there's no rental income, it's money in and it's money back out again. However, during those five years, you can stay for seven days in any of those hotels in Portugal free of charge, which will, of course, accommodate your minimum stay requirements. Um, that's it. Okay, nothing singing or dancing there. It is just a straightforward investment for minimum amount of capital to get passports. Uh, another good option at the moment, this is officially the one investment in the whole of Portugal that will achieve the passports with as little money as possible. And it is going to be a Wyndham Hotel, uh, currently under a huge renovation. Once it's finished, it will look exactly as you see in those photos there. Uh, the proposition being that, again, you can buy a share for the qualifying €280,000. You'll become a co-owner of the entire development. The developer will pay all of the property taxes as before up front. You still have a guaranteed exit uh, with the buyback after you have your passport. The real big incentive with this one, which is very unique, is there is uh, a rental income paid. The developer actually pays an upfront rental income of €30,000. And naturally, that can be used for covering things like your legal fees and golden visa fees. Um, effectively, buying the share at 250 rather than 280. So, one of the uh, I mentioned on the, the itinerary for this evening how to buy, how to get the golden visa for less than 280,000. The answer is with the Wyndham Hotel. Uh, for a single application, you actually get the passport and a bonus of about 10,000 when it's all done as well. So. It's a great option, uh, again, with a big developer, not quite as substantial as, as the initial one, but uh, yeah, it's solid as far as we're concerned and a very low capital option to get the passport. Uh, okay, last but not least on the 280 option, this is my personal favorite. I am hugely biased because it's about half an hour from where, where I live down in the, uh, in the Algarve, uh, but this hotel is already built. It is actually a fully functioning four-star hotel uh, that is already on booking.com. Uh, it is, however, very run down, very kind of uh, year 2000, very bright colors. And, yeah, you, would, you wouldn't be too impressed if you were staying there at the moment. However, it has just closed the doors for a full renovation, uh, which will aim to end at the end of this year, beginning of next year. When it's all finished, it will be a all-inclusive, as new four-star hotel right in the center of the Algarve uh, in a town called Alvor. So that, that photo was actually taken in summertime this year. The difference with this one is that you are not buying a share in the hotel. You actually have the option to buy an individual apartment um, and you can choose exactly which apartment that it is and you'll become the full title deed owner of that apartment. And there are still some units which are actually two studio apartments sold as one unit. Um, so the prices start at 280. I think they're sold at 280 now, but between 285 and 295, there is still availability. Uh, again, the price varies depending on the floor and the view. Personally, I think the pool side is got a nicer view, but it's slightly more expensive. Uh, but all between 285 and 295, the developer pays all the taxes up front. Uh, the reason I prefer this one slightly is that, first of all, the buyback is still in place, but it is an optional buyback, which means that if property prices do go up, in the next five years, like they have done in the last five years, you don't have to sell it back for the same price that you paid for it. You have the option to keep it, to sell it on the open market, or simply draw a rental income. And from year six, you'll automatically receive that rental income, which after the hotel has managed the property, they take care of all the upkeep and maintenance and cleaning and check-ins. You just leave the key with them, and they will simply pay 50% of the rental into your account which will work out to be about 5% per year. On top of that, you can stay there for two weeks every year instead of just so twice as many holidays. Um, so yeah, that is door number three, two weeks. 
Okay, on with that, a uh, quick snapshot of right at the opposite end of the price scale. Okay, the closer you get to 500, the more profitable it can become. Okay, this one actually has sold out, I think I've shown, but uh, I think there's one, one two bed. Maybe, maybe, I don't know if that one bed's come back for sale, but I'll, I'll look at it briefly. Um, this again is in our vault, it's right behind the yellow tube, mm -hmm. and it qualifies at 400,000. You can buy a one bedroom at 400,000, or you can buy a two bedroom at 450. Um, the reason why it's sold so well, I think, is that the developer is actually paying a rental income of 5.2% per year. And they'll actually pay six years rental income up front, which means that you can actually buy a one bed for 306,000 with a buyback at 400. And in worst case scenario, you have a very healthy profit margin. Again, it's an optional buyback, um, and you can stay there for four weeks every year as well. So much more profitable than the options at 280, and got more capital. Um, so, yeah, any interest in that one, please do let us know as soon as you can, because like I said, there's maybe one, one apartment left in the Pelican. However, last but not least, uh, uh, the best best until last, I suppose I should be saying, this is officially the most profitable qualifying investment in Portugal right now. Um, and it is a five-star golf and spa resort. It is a purpose-built hotel on a PGA golf course. Uh, it's a very nice place to be, about 40 minutes north of Lisbon, again on the Silver Coast. It looks exactly as you see in the photo. It was built and finished back in 2021. The grass has properly grown in, but other than that, it looks exactly the same as you see there. Uh, the hotel at the back is not for sale, unfortunately, but the apartments at the front are a mixture of studio and one bedroom apartment. Uh, and there is the, the top floors, the first floors have sold out, unfortunately, but there is, there is still some ground floor apartments available, which I think personally is the better choice because you have the kind of unobstructed grass at the back, which very much feels like your own private garden. But there you go. Uh, but that's the, the view. You can see the golf course there at the front. I think the, uh, the European Open was played there. Last year, I'm not much of a golfer, unfortunately, but uh, as you can see, um, very attractive for uh, for the golfing community. So any golfers out there, it's a good show. Uh, the sea view all from the apartments. As an investor, however, these are the details that you need to know. So it qualifies at 500,000. Okay, it's not a low density area or a renovation. It's just a brand new project. Um, so it qualifies at 500,000. So you can buy either two studios at 350 each, or you can buy a one bedroom for 500,000. Um, the numbers that you need to know, actually the hotel pays a guaranteed fixed return of 7% per year, free tax. And after tax, it comes out to 5.25% per year. Uh, and the developer will pay five years rental income up front, which will allow you to buy a one bedroom apartment at just 368,000, however, with a buyback at 500. So you already have a predetermined profit of the difference between 500 and 368. It's an optional buyback if you wish to keep it. And you can stay there for six weeks every year. Or oh, as we did, I think, a couple of weeks back, Shane, we did, uh, we did three weeks and, we, and they could have the two apartments to bring family out. Remember, so either are six weeks or, or three weeks or two. Um, so yeah, that is that, that's a very super fast snapshot at the top properties in Portugal right now, as far as we're concerned. So for any details on those, uh, of course, please ask. But that brings us up to the Q and A section. I think I've covered quite a lot. Uh, hopefully that was uh, that was helpful. But yeah, yeah great job, Jason. Any questions? Thank you very much indeed. A lot of complex information there and some reassurance that uh, people are looking for. I think we need to do a little bit of a triage. Uh, on these questions tonight. There are some things, obviously, that you're best able to address, which is how you manage the Golden Visa process yourselves. Um, there is, of course, the Dream Team session that we've got afterwards for those more uh, general and uh, more sort of questions about speculating on what the government might do. You can't really answer those, can you? It's in the government's hands in many ways. 
um, a lot of the process, and, and you've referred to that, of course. Um, and then there are questions that might go to the forum at expatsportugal.com forward slash community for further discussion. Um, so let's see how we, we triage the questions that are coming in on that basis. Great job. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Shane, uh, for being here tonight and delivering such complex uh, uh, information in, in as simple a way as possible there. Uh, we start with Ron Mintz, uh, and uh, that would be any chance they permit the investment schemes, which often build housing, but are not a house purchased directly. Um, I think you've addressed that in many ways, haven't you? And again, you can't really second guess what the government are going to do in the future. You want to say that one, Yeah. So, I mean, exactly that. If you, if you look at what they're saying, the, the, the types of things that they're implementing, they're trying to take away short-term rentals. So everybody that's now being purchasing and investing within the country that have an Airbnb or, or something like that, they're trying to now take that away. So they're stopping short-term rental certificates now being issued where investors now will either have to long-term rental it or they'll physically have to live in there. So there's a lot of things that they're doing that doesn't really make sense to, to a lot of us out there. But what we what we expect is after the communication, we, we would see the Golden Visa initially, yes, I would say that it had an impact on property pricing. Since then, your Nomad visas, your D7s, um, just general people moving to Portugal, that, that's what's driven the pricing. The Golden Visa, not for the last year specifically, would I say has impacted the pricing. Okay. That's addressed a few people's questions there. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions that come up, do stick them into the, the Q&A or the chat and we'll get to them. Um, when you say Porto, this is an anonymous participant here. Does it mean just downtown city of Porto or one is not allowed to buy a residential property? How about five to 10 miles out of Porto? You can help people, can't you? Going further into the into the countryside or the interior. And that would be a matter of having a conversation with the team, I suspect, right? Yeah, uh, generally speaking, if you look at the, 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 there's a distinct map of where you can and cannot purchase. So yeah. in and around is, is generally what we're talking about with, with the main cities. So Porto, Algarve, uh, Lisbon. I mean, even if you look at Lisbon, that, that falls under Kashkai, so it falls under half of the, the Silver Coast. So not necessarily anywhere close to the towns. And you'll find also most of the, the, the coastlines are also impacted. It's more the interior where they're trying to refocus investment. Yeah. Okay. And the details for Jason are on the screen if you want to start that conversation there. Um, Jason.swan at holbanassets.com. David, thank you for this. If I plan to invest a 280,000 euro in residential investment in a low density area that qualifies as a renovation, can I create my own renovation project or does it need to be qualified by the employment of some qualifying renovation construction firm? No, so I mean, if you if you're looking at the, the that if, if you find a building that is thirty years or older, and you renovate, not a problem. It comes down to where that property is. If that property is in the in, inner towns, then yes, it's a residential property and it will qualify. But then you've got to make sure that two hundred it's within a two hundred and eighty qualifying area. If it's in within your main towns, like in El for instance, there we would need special licensing for that specific property. So it has to have a touristic license or a tourism license, which are quite difficult to come by and from and, and quite timelessly to get. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? At this stage of the game and the way things are, adding to the timeline now is not something you want to do, hence the attractiveness of the packages you've presented tonight. Exactly. So the, these are passive investments. It's, it's not taking a lot of input from the clients. If you look at it, it's generating an income for very little input. Yes. You don't want to have to worry about has my water heater gone? Um, do who do I get out at four o'clock in the morning to go and fix it? Yeah. All of the maintenance, breakages, all that's taken care of on your behalf. Yeah. It sounded very attractive, Shane, when you said earlier on, you can do most of this sat in the chair that you're in now. I think that, that probably went down well with quite a few people. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's kind of what everybody likes. So, uh, people have busy lives. Uh, yes. Not always uh, time to do this type of thing. Yep. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank we, you for that. We've got the team. Brilliant. And we'll go to some of the questions that were sent in earlier as well. After we've spoken to Michael here, is it 
it, it is common uh, public knowledge that CEF is significantly delayed in approaching all golden visas. The delays are reaching uh, years and years, uh, but, but is what Michael's saying. That this delay conflicts with the five-year investment period and requires another reinvestment in order to co- continue to qualify for Portuguese passports. Why is this not being addressed? Well, it'll have to be, won't it? Well, I mean, they, they, they kind of have. So in the last month, they've already made one adjustment. So prior to well, this year, you used to have to do your biometric renewals in per- person. So all your renewals, you had to do your biometric appointment and go in person to Portugal. Now what they've done is they've altered it. So they've changed the the in-person part and the biometric part, and you now can do it online. So which has obviously freed up a lot of SEF staff. Um, There's always been an an issue with the the SEF, but now obviously the the impact of it and the, the changes that are happening, they kind of have to get going. What they did last year to obviously speed up everything is from the 1st of January to June, they actually didn't accept any uh, new cases. So all the new cases were from June last year. So now all of a sudden that back year, uh, backlog of years and years and years are now down to six months. Okay, great. All right. So it is speeding up. Uh, I know for a lot of clients it's not quick enough, but uh, it, it, it's going in the right direction. And it is past, a part of the cultural adjustment to life in Portugal, you might say as well, to get used to that. Um, and also, uh, Seth were successfully sued, weren't they, by a couple, which I suspect is a precedent. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know as well. Um, can the government, if we're going to questions asked earlier uh, that were sent in to you, uh, can the government pass retrospective legislation revoking existing law on golden visa uh, for existing participants? Now, it would be very unlikely. Um, Of course they can, but it would be so unlikely, right? Why would they do that? Well, I mean, it's (laughs) legislative. So they'd have to bring in new legislative law. And generally from new new law or new (laughs) legislation, they don't go retrospective. They can't go retrospective because the law at the time of entry point was that. So that would be basically like saying, um, we're changing the law now because anyone that goes through a orange robot will now be arrested. Yes. Then basically you'd have to arrest everyone that's ever gone through a, an orange robot. So it's always, it's never, it, it's never going backwards, always looking forward. All right. Interesting example. Thank you very much for that question. And thank you for your answer there, Shane. Um, Are the options, I don't quite understand this myself, but it might make more sense to you. And you may have indeed addressed it already in the presentation, but are the options for long-term leasing going to improve within this year due to the changes, do you think? Well, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take away all these short-term Airbnb options and trying to get these properties to be rented out by long-term people. Okay. That's their aim. But whether they're going to get it right or not, but remember that that's a massive amounts of investment. So people are buying secondary homes, third homes, just for investment purposes, which then makes investors a little bit nervous to invest their money. Yeah. So it's a good and a bad thing. It just depends which side of the fence you're sitting on. Okay. Thank you for that, Shane. Um, are the Asorish, and for that matter, let's ask about Madeira as well. Um, are the uh, autonomous regions included and will they remain included within the time scale you're describing for the Golden Visa? Yeah. So the, the, those specific areas are actually residential areas. So you can buy a residential property and they fall under the same banner as all the rest. So it's just one Golden Visa. Okay. And can you help people with that? We can. It becomes a little bit more difficult because when you're buying a residential property, everyone has people are buying with emotion as opposed to sort of business mind. The reason why I say that is you may want a pink door and and yellow roof, and then it becomes can we find that property for you? Yes. Uh, As opposed to is this a good business decision? So those type of residential properties become very difficult because there's a lot of personal uh, interpretation. And we can. Another thing that would add to the timescale, of course, with that sort of specification. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't want that right now. Okay. Um, I think we've answered this for sure. Uh, what is the best and uh, most straightforward way of obtaining a golden visa through 280,000? You addressed that, of course, uh, Jason. And Royal Obidosh does look very nice. That's at the other end of the spectrum. But I was up that way at the weekend. It is beautiful up there at the Royal Obidosh on the Silver Coast there. Um, any chance that the investment vehicle remains while the housing option is cancelled? Or is it all over for new applicants? I think you've addressed that really, haven't you, there with with the changes coming up? And still, as you say, the timescale, they're very interesting, Shane. Yeah, I mean, when they announced it, they didn't say that specific parts of the Golden Visa were going to close. They said the the entire Golden Visa was going to close as a a vehicle. Yeah. 
So okay. again, we're we're at the mercy of the government. Yep. Okay. And that's the case with a lot of these questions, folks. And sorry, we can't do crystal ball or um, tell you what the government are going to do here. Um, We can discuss it and we can get some views on this, certainly in the Dream Team session from nine o'clock tonight uh, on Zoom. Um, And of course, in the the forum as well, expatsportugal.com. This is, for example, a great question to take there is how can we best help the economy for the people of Portugal as expats? That'll be a great question uh, to take over there. Um, the, the commercial property has been dealt with as well earlier on by Jason. Um, I am in the process of purchasing a golden visa qualified property. Is there still time to submit my application? Yes, of course there is. But again, within the time scale talked about there and, and projections that have you, you've been given by Shane. Um, 280 seems pricey. Uh, surely there's uh, properties for less considering many Portuguese make less than a thousand per month. Well, um, that is the lower threshold, Jason, isn't it? And that is a requirement of the golden visa itself. Not much can be done about that. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of properties to buy at less money, but it's the government's rules that it must be a minimum of 280. So that is okay. the, uh, the government to, to go out on that one. All right. Thank you very much. And back in our Q&A here on the webinar, does all the money used to invest for a golden visa have to be hard cash? Mm-hmm. For example, uh, five hundred thousand for a house. Can it be mortgaged? So no, unfortunately, the qualifying criteria. So whether it be two eighty three fifty four hundred or five hundred, that portion has to be cash. If you are buying a property that is higher than that, so let's say we use a million for instance, the the remaining fifty five hundred thousand can be mortgaged. So as long as the criteria is met, cash, the remainder can be mortgaged. Okay, I think that does it for the questions uh, with your comprehensive uh, treatment in the presentation there. Um, your contact details are on the screen, Jason, jason.swan at holbornassets.com. Um, do join us for the Dream Team session. Let's go to some closing uh, comments from you both, if we may. Um, and I, I can I can see you'll have had a very busy week this week. Um, so all the best. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Do get your, your questions in now. If you, if, you, if you want to ask something, do it now, um, as Jason and Shane are both making their closing comments this evening. So uh, you first, Shane. What are your final words on this matter? of the golden visa here in Portugal. A historic week, really, in a historic moment. Yeah, it is. It is. And I, and I think it's important to understand that there's nothing quite like it. Uh, people have asked, been asking me, what is there to replace it? Where, where do I go if this doesn't happen? At this present moment, there's nothing like it. So if this <laughs> is something that you have an idea to take, rather, rather take the opportunity while it's in front of you. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Shane. And to you, Jason. Yeah, similar message, Kelly. Yeah, it's, um, just we're, we're hoping it will be delayed. Uh, we're, we're hoping we will have a grace period till towards the end of this year, but we just don't know at this moment in time. So it's the best advice I can give anyone is to really just, well, all you can do is to get your bank account number set up, sorry, bank account and tax number set up and do your utmost to get everything through before potential deadline. But uh, if not possible, then at least you can move very quickly uh, if it is an immediate withdrawal or one shortly thereafter in six weeks. Okay, perfect. There are the contact details for Jason Swan, senior partner at Holborn Assets. Uh, Holborn Assets. And he said Holborn Assets there. Uh, Jason, th- thank you for your sexy presentation. Thank you for being here this evening. Uh, thank you to Shane as well. Um, we'll leave it there.